The Disney Discovery Series presents Telling Time. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. In the back of your book, you will find a picture of a clock. You may want to cut it out and use it to follow along as you learn to tell time with Mickey and Goofy. Ready? Let's begin now. One summer day, Mickey Mouse went to visit his friend Goofy. When he arrived, he found Goofy sitting on the branch of a tree. Goofy, what are you doing up there? Trying an experiment, Mick. Watch this. Before Mickey could stop him, Goofy took off his watch and tossed it into the air. Goofy, why did you do that? Gosh, Mick, I'd always heard that time flies. As Goofy climbed down, Mickey picked up the watch. Goofy, time flies, but watches don't. This one needs to be fixed. Now I'm in a fix. I'm supposed to mow Uncle Scrooge's lawn at 1.15. But without a watch, I won't know when to go. You can borrow mine if you promise to take good care of it. Mickey put his watch on Goofy's wrist, and Goofy stared at it. This sure is a funny-looking watch. Instead of a few numbers in the middle, it's got lots of numbers around the edges. Mickey smiled at his friend. That's because my watch isn't digital like yours. Mine has a flat part called a face, 12 numbers in a circle, and two pointers called hands. You should learn how to read them if you want to tell time. <laughs> Gosh, Mick, do you think you could teach me? I'd be happy to, old buddy. Follow me. Mickey headed for town with Goofy at his side. You see, Goofy, each day starts at 12 o'clock midnight and goes to the next 12 o'clock midnight. That means it's 24 hours long. <laughs> Gosh, no wonder I get tired. Telling time means knowing what hour of the day it is. And for that, people need clocks. Mickey pointed to the sky. You know, Goofy, the first clock that people ever used is right up there. Is it in that airplane, Mick? <laughs> no, Goofy, it's the sun. By checking its position, people could see what time of day it was. But they wanted something more exact. We'll find what they used in that building up ahead. The Museum of Science and Industry. Well, Mick, what are we waiting for? Let's go on in. Inside, Mickey took Goofy to a display filled with timepieces. The next clock was the hourglass. People told time by watching how much sand had flowed into the bottom of the glass. Mickey, look at this clock. It was called a sundial. You could see what hour it was by watching where the shadow pointed. Goofy looked up at Mickey with a big grin on his face. Hey, Mick, I have another kind of clock. My stomach. <laughs> it's telling me that it's time to eat. The two friends went to Mickey's house for lunch. As Goofy ate, he kept looking at the clock on the wall. You know, Mick, there's something I can't figure out. People need hands for holding peanut butter sandwiches, but why do clocks need hands? Mickey took the clock down from the wall to show him. The hands tell you what time it is, Goofy. The little hand tells you the hour, and the big hand tells you the minute. What's the hour right now? Goofy studied the clock. The little hand is the hour hand, and it's pointing to the twelve. I guess that means it's twelve o'clock. That's lunchtime, right, Mick? <laughs> right, Goofy. What time is it when the hour hand points to the six? It must be six o'clock. Time for dinner. And what time is it when the hour hand points to the nine? Now it's nine o'clock. Gosh, Mick. That's my bedtime. I'd better be going. <laughs> no, Goofy, we were just pretending. But if the hour hand really did go all the way around the clock, how many hours would pass? Well, there are 12 numbers, so it must be 12 hours. That means twice around the clock is 
24 hours. Well, that's one day, isn't it, Mick? It sure is, Goofy. You're doing great. Goofy looked at the clock again and scratched his head. If the hour hand points to the one, I know it's one o'clock. If it points to the two, it's two o'clock. But, Mick, what happens when the hour hand is between two numbers? That's where the big hand comes in. It's called the minute hand because it tells you how many minutes past the hour it is. <laughs> Gosh, that sure is handy. <laughs> you see, Goofy, there are 60 minutes in each hour and 60 marks around the outside of the clock. You can read the minutes on the clock by seeing which mark the minute hand's pointing to. Well, that's kind of different from my digital watch. Right, Goofy. On a digital watch, the numbers to the left of the dots tell the hour, and the numbers to the right of the dots tell the minutes. Mickey moved the minute hand and the hour hand, so they were both pointing at the twelve. Each hour starts with the minute hand straight up, like this. What time is it now? It must be exactly twelve o'clock. Right, Goofy. And how about this? Mickey moved the minute hand over three marks. Gosh, Mick, now it's three minutes past twelve. Very good. Three minutes past twelve is also called 12.03. After lunch, Goofy got up to leave. Well, the hour hand's on the one, and the minute hand's pointing straight up. That means it's one o'clock. I guess I'd better go if I want to be at Uncle Scrooge's house by 1.15. Good idea, Goofy. You know what Uncle Scrooge always says, time is money, so don't be late. How could I be late, Mick? <laughs> I've got a watch, and I know how to tell time. So long! At 1.30, Mickey was in town running some errands. He walked past the clock shop, and there was Goofy. Hi, Mick. I stopped by on my way to Uncle Scrooge's house. Aren't these clocks great? Yes, but Goofy, look at the time. That's just what I did. The hour hand's on the one, and the minute hand's on the six. That means it's one o six. Mickey led Goofy inside and showed him a grandfather clock. Remember, each mark stands for one minute. And there are 30 marks between the 12 and the 6. Uh-oh, Mick. It's not 106. It's 130. I'm late. Mickey called Uncle Scrooge and explained what had happened, then turned to Goofy. Uncle Scrooge says you can mow the lawn tomorrow, but he'll only pay you half as much. <laughs> That's okay, Mick. I was going to do it for free anyway. Goofy looked up at the clock. Gosh, Mick, it seems kind of hard to count all those little marks whenever you want to know what time it is. You're right, Goofy, but there's a trick to make it easier. Every time the minute hand goes from one number to the next, five minutes have passed. Can you count by fives? I sure can, Mick. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I'll move the minute hand, and you tell me what time it is. Goofy called out the time. Let's see now. 105. 110. 115. 120. 125. 130. We're halfway around, Goofy. That's why 130 is sometimes called half past one. Right, Mick. 135. 140. 145. 150, 155. And now we're back at the top again. <laughs> I guess that means it's 2 o'clock. Right, old buddy. Mickey reset the clock and headed for the door. Gee, Goofy, we were having so much fun that I almost forgot. I have more errands to do. Would you like to come along and help me keep track of the time? <laughs> Gosh, Mick, that'd be swell. They hopped in Mickey's car and drove to Minnie's house to help her do some gardening. While they worked, Goofy looked at his watch. 
the hour hands on the two, and the minute hands on the three. It must be five, ten, fifteen minutes past two. Right, Mick? You've got it, Goofy. Two fifteen. When they finished, they drove to school to pick up Morty and Ferdy. When the final bell rang and the boys came hurrying out, Goofy glanced at his wrist again. The hour hands on the three, and the minute hands on the two. So it's three ten. You're right on time, boys. They dropped off the boys and went to see Donald, who had offered to give Pluto a bath. When they arrived, they saw that someone had gotten a bath, all right, but it didn't seem to be Pluto. Mickey laughed sheepishly. <laughs> well, Donald, thanks a lot. I guess we'd better be going. Goofy looked at his watch. The hour hands on the four, and the minute hands on the one. That means it's four o five. Late that afternoon, Mickey took Goofy home. Gosh, Mick, the sun's calling it a day, so I guess I will too. Thanks for letting me use your watch. <laughs> I'll take good care of it. Any time, Goofy. Time. The hour hands on the five, and the minute hands on the two. Goofy knows what time it is. Do you? Grandfather clock stands in the hall. It's very old and it's very tall. And though it is a stately sight, it never can tell the time just right. And it goes tick tock, tick tock, tick. Tick tock, tick 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 tock, tick tock, tick tick tock. Sometimes it stops, sometimes it goes. Just what's wrong, nobody knows. But every time that I pass by, it always seems to wink its eye. And it goes tick tock, tick tock, tick tick tock, tick 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 tock, tick tock, tick. The expert in to see what he could do. He gave it a knock and he gave it a shake and the clock struck twenty-two and it went tick tock tick tock tick tick tock tick 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 tock tick tock tick tick tock. This night I heard the strangest thing. First a roar and then a ring. When I crept out of my bed, the clock was standing on its head, and it went tick tock, tick tock, tick tick tock, tick 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 tock, tick tock, tick tick tock. This morning I discreetly tried to open it and look inside, but a voice cried, <laughs> "Can't you see? You tick tock." And it went tick tock, tick tock, tick, tick tock, tick 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 tock, tick tock, tick tick tock. That was the end of our look at Telling Time. If you would like to listen to it again, turn the tape over. <laughs>